Less Conversations Podcast episode. I don't even know. We ain't gonna get into that. But but um, when you talk about the three three six Greensboro, Winston Salem, it's a few big deals in this city, and um, we got one of them. We got one of them here today. Uh, I've been following this man career since I moved here in two thousand three. When he was doing skits on the radio, his name was Lil Prison. <laughs> so, we, so all the way back then, we have the pleasure, the honor of speaking to 102 Jams, 3 Live Crew. Man, the myth, the legend, hmm. D-Dot. Yeah, appreciate yeah, all of that. Man. Respect. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank I you, man. That. You hear them accolades? Yeah, I hear them. They built me up right I know, now. right? Yeah, made me feel real good. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> Yes, sir. Nick Cannon's wilding out as well. Yes, sir. Yes, but the sir. people, but the people already know that. That's man. what's up. Thank you, man. No, Thank I you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, being on this podcast. I reached out to you. You was like, hell yeah, I do it. And yeah. I was like, for real. And I was yeah. like, I was like, man, I, I truly appreciate it, man. Hey, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. You feel me? You ask for it. And the worst thing they can say is no. No. Nope. You feel? That's what my grandma too? always told me. That's your right. grandma was a wise lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's best, best conversations podcast. So, man, we gonna. We're going to get into your journey, man. Like I said, man, I moved to Greensboro 2003 from high school. Um, and I remember first hearing you on the radio with Africa yeah. and uh, Cal. Yeah. And you were just like Cap the... Cap J. And Cap J, just yeah, yeah. like, the, like the, the, the little guy to the yeah. room. And now you like... Big dog. Now you the big dog yeah. in the room, man. Yeah. Talk about your journey, man, of starting with those guys and to be where you at now. Oh, no. I- Nothing short of a blessing, man. Like for real. Like I started at Winston Salem State. As far as B dot is concerned, that whole um, that whole persona was made in Winston Salem State University, and I was just trying to do an internship um, so that I could graduate at mm. um, and I mean um, um, at one hundred two jams. I'm about to say at A&T, at one hundred two jams, and um, I had at that time around two thousand and three, two thousand and four. I was King Kong at Winston-Salem State. Like, I hosted everything. Um, I was fortunate enough. Harold Martin, who is the chancellor now at A&T, he was the chancellor at Winston-Salem State at this mm-hmm. time. And he saw the way that the um, students gravitated towards me on campus, and he gave me the opportunity to be the PA announcer for Winston-Salem State at that mm-hmm. time, around 2004. Um, so I was just a big deal in that regard. So people who worked at 102 Jams would come down and do things on campus, mm-hmm. and they and everybody would tell them, yo, y'all need to put B-Dot on, B-Dot, B-Dot. So they would be like, who is the B-Dot? So... I went to go do an internship at 102 Jams because you needed that to graduate. Mm-hmm. And while I was in there, I just loved being at the radio station. Like, I never envisioned myself doing radio. Like, radio was not something that I grew up wanting to do. Mm-hmm. Um, to do. I always knew that I wanted to entertain. I knew I wanted to be on television. I just knew that I wanted to be able to be paid for entertaining people. I've always was the class clown and yeah. always got in trouble for stuff like that. So I never knew that I was honing skills in that yeah, right. same regard. You feel me? So um, fast forward again to 2003, 2004. And I'm getting an internship, but I'm on everybody's show. Like, I'm um, in the mornings helping them out. I'm with Waleed Coyote in the mm-hmm. afternoon, uh, at nighttime. Right. Um, I'm with Tap Money in the afternoons. Right. I'm with Showdown overnight. Like, yeah. I, I just won't leave the building. Right. And then I would go to Winston Salem State and go to class and and, and have fun there, rocking parties, et cetera, et cetera. Because when you first started, you was like still in college, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Like, I was getting my internship and. I went to go meet the program director, the PD at the station at the time, my boss. Uh, he's still the PD, um, Brian Douglas. And he had he, he was already aware of me. He was like, mm-hmm. I've heard great things about you. With the and my um, I was I remember one time I was at my um, at my bro boss crib. We were in Plaza South in Winston-Salem and Africa called me mm-hmm. and she said, um, we've been hearing a lot of great things about you. And we want to know if you want to be the intern um, for our morning show. And I was like, um, you know, I'm interested, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, you know, but they needed me to be there at 530 in the morning. And yeah. when you're in college, sometimes you ain't going to bed to two, three in the morning. You right. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, so to get up and be there at 530, eh, I didn't know. And I was really having fun on Waleed's show at night because Waleed would have the strippers. Right. He would have, I remember, yeah. it would be so lit on Waleed's show. So I talked to my man, Carlos, Carlos King, who's in promotions now at Jams. And he was sort of my, he's sort of my mentor. Um, I've always been fortunate enough to have people in front of me that I can consider mentors that I can go to. Mm-hmm. I was always taught, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So Absolutely. I always want to make sure I have people that I can go to for knowledge. You feel me? You like that? Yeah. You can keep that. <laughs> I felt that. You can keep that. That was a word. I was. You can keep that. <laughs> so um, I hit Lowe's, and I was like, Lowe's, African didn't want me on mornings. While Lee said he want me on nights, which one should I do? He was like, people work their whole careers trying to get on morning radio. If you get an opportunity to get on morning radio, take it. Thanks. 
So I was like, all right, man, I'll, I'll do it. And I got on mornings, and within like two weeks, they were like, um, I remember Kyle asking me, he was like, have you ever thought about doing prank phone calls? And I was like, <laughs> nah, like what? Like you call somebody and say, uh, and then mess with me. He's like, yeah. So we was like, let's try some. So we called like a McDonald's and hit the McDonald's asking them, could they give us a Whopper and all kinds of just being ridiculous, stupid stuff. And it went well. So we was like, let's call another one. We called Bojangles and asked them about their different yeah. wings and Buffalo wings and all kinds of stuff. And like we knocked out like three or four of them and it was just like, yo, we might have something. Mm -hmm. So for the next... <laughs> For the next three years, I was known as the prank call guy. Marcus Patton is prank call guy. <laughs> he talked Patton. about Lil Prison. Lil Prison was one of the characters that I had made up who was a, a guy who was he had been locked up for some yeah. stuff that he had done in the past, but he had tried to get out and tried to reach the youth. But every time he would try to reach the youth, his rhymes would take him back to prison and he would just <laughs> relapse and, just, and it would just go totally left. And we just I had Marcus Patton Sr. and just a bunch of different ridiculous characters. And... I was on the radio and I was like the biggest name on the radio for like six months and I wasn't even getting a check. Like I was still just an intern, mm. not getting paid. Not getting a check, exactly. but still working. Oh man, that's super important. Like super so many important. people think, but see, you know what's sad though? A lot of times people go to college and they don't do their internships until their senior year. So they don't know exactly what it is they want to do. Mm -hmm. And by the time they graduate, now they're trying they to go stuck. get an intern and you can't work for free. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You put yourself in a position where it's not even realistic. Like at that point, you maybe got kids, you got bills, you got rent, you mm -hmm. have to take care of these things. So it's not necessarily a knock when people say, I got, I can't do it for free. I understand that. I was very fortunate and blessed that I was in a situation where I didn't need 102 Jams money because I was already at Winston-Salem State hosting parties. I was the PA announcer. I was already getting a check and, and money. So money wasn't the issue. I was just building my brand. Mm -hmm. Everybody doesn't have that fortunate situation Absolutely. like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I do understand, like, you try to tell people you will have to work for free. So if you're in college and you're listening to this, like, definitely, man, like, and do your internships as early as possible. Don't wait till your senior year because the most important thing about an internship is not that you like it but finding out what you don't like. Mm -hmm. Like it would suck to go do an internship at the newspaper and realize you don't like the newspaper and mm -hmm. you put all these hours in trying to be an editor at the newspaper. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So like mm -hmm. as a sophomore, as a freshman, like sign up for internships and leave the state. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Take you an internship at ESPN up there in Boston. Take you mm -hmm. an internship with the LA Rams. Like, And that's what I do. Like I have friends that are in significant spots in different careers. So when people hit me up and they're like, yo, I'm trying to do, it's nothing for me to try to plug them in situations so that they can try to better their situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like, um, I don't really know how we got off on the tangent of nah, internship. Keep going, keep, keep going. going. My please, bad. Like, they're just so important, going. man. Please like, I going. am where I am because of an internship. Like, so I wasn't the when best you was student. in high school, what did you want to do? Um, I wanted to draw. I was, really? I'm, a, I'm an artist. I, 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 I draw very, very well. And when I graduated from high school, um, I had a full ride to the Art Academy in Cincinnati. Mm. In that same time frame, though, my mom, I was sort of like the head of the house. Okay. My mom, she was, um, she wasn't married. She was recently divorced, maybe two years removed from a divorce. So I felt like it was my obligation to sort of stay at the house and, and, and watch my little brother and my little sister and, and you know, just be the man of the house in that regard. And it was really the best thing ever because I sat out like three years. And in those three years, my mom got remarried. And the guy she got married to, uh, Terry Croom, I, I hated him because he told my mom, he was like, um, you know, Brian is 19 years old and he's still staying in the house. Like, that's not a way for a man to live. And yeah. He needs to get his own house. And I'm sitting like, dude, like, I've been holding <laughs> down this career for the past six right. years. <laughs> like, who do you think you ought to come in and kick me out? You know what right. I'm saying? And because my mom agreed with him, that drew a, a, a line there. You know what I'm saying? Like, You a didn't beat. feel like that helped you? No, absolutely not. Not at 19 mm -hmm. because I was super spoiled and there was no male guidance there to tell me that mm -hmm. that was the right thing to do. He was being that male guidance, but because I hadn't had that for the past six years, I felt like I was the male guidance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, but in hindsight, it was the best thing ever. Like, like it was, it was, it was, it was awesome because he, they told, the ultimatum was you have to go to college. Mm -hmm. The same, the same uh, ultimatum that all black moms give. Yes. You have to go to college or <laughs> yeah. you have to get a job and get your own place. That's yes. it. Period. Yeah. And. I was lazy, so I'm like, well, I'm going to just go to college because at least college, they'll pay for me somewhere to sleep. Yeah. I can eat for free. I just got to get some grades or whatever, like whatever. So, and what I was did your major again? Mass communications. Oh. When I first started, though, my major was art because oh. that's what I just piggybacked off what my major was going to be from high school. Right. And I didn't want to go to A&T because I grew up in Greensboro. So, like, I had been in Barbie Hall more than the average freshman. You understand what I'm saying to you? So, from that perspective, I was like, where can I go this far but not too far? I can still see my brother and sister, mm -hmm. Winston-Salem State. Mm -hmm. And so I go to Winston-Salem State and... Um, 
they have a modeling troupe, Mozique, and it's all the bad bitches is in mo is in Mozique. So I'm like, I'm trying to be around that action. You feel yeah. like I'm not a model, but I want to be around that. So because I have a great personality, I made the modeling troupe, but I didn't like modeling and all that. I did one show and I got a good response, but I'm not a model type guy, but I like the engagement. I like being on the stage. So I asked them, could I host mm -hmm. the next show? And they gave me the opportunity to host the next show. And from there, I said, wherever there's a microphone, I, ha I have to have it. I have to have it.